Well, I just uh, got done scratching all the crystallized urine and corroded zinc out of my carburetor, that fluffy stuff that was in the bottom, or crystally stuff. Now I'm starting to put it back together. Modified propane tank is my portable compressed air bottle that I just refill off my big compressor. Oh, I gotta climb in this stupid engine bay and pretend I'm young again fixing this shit. <coughs> Anyways, I just got done installing the float. Below that was where all the shit was. And that's the pin that holds the float in and the needle's right there. This is the power valve, spring-loaded. It goes into two jets way down there. This is the hole where the accelerator pump goes, which is this piston. It's like a plunger. Gas is in the bottom. Every time you push on the gas pedal, this goes up and down and gives an extra squirt that comes out here and here into your Venturi's. These are the secondaries or also called the four barrels. They only open under wide open throttle. These are your two smaller Venturi's which are smaller so you get better torque and better fuel economy at low RPMs. And on top of this little float shaft and the power valve goes this little plastic block to hold everything in place. I've just cheated and bent the gasket back it's not that important because the fuel doesn't come up that high, it sits about right there. Every time you set a float, you set it so that when it shuts off the needle valve, it's exactly level with the top of the carburetor for all machines. Tuck the gasket back under the power valve. There we go. Now the tricky part. That part is the part that goes on top, like this. See? The part you recognize. All those stupid little needles have to fall down in the right holes and not bend those itty bitty little tips on the end. And then the next tricky part is getting the little choke linkage rod that goes down that hole to reconnect all up and not fall off. Pain, painous in the anus doing that. Oh, and the next problem is, of course, when you're trying to put the top of the carburetor on, this stupid thing, because it's spring-loaded, just keeps jumping out. Gee, I love fuel injection. I'm glad I'm one of the few people that figured it all out and understands how to fix electronic fuel injection. For you more primitive guys, I guess you can understand this, but I'm sick of understanding this crap. And now that I've got the top set back on and all the needles in place, and there's the actuator for those two back little needles, I've got to use my trusty flashlight and go fishing down that hole to get this little chunk linkage reconnected into the lever that's in there when you actuate this lever it moves the lever that's in the hole and when I get this one hooked in I put this one in this arm and a c-clip on what a pain in the butt got it see pulling that moves all that crap now to put it in this hole there. See, now it works. That works the choke. Now I'm just going to put the clip on here. And now the accelerator pump linkage. That's hooked to your gas pedal. When all that crap moves here, it lifts this little linkage up and down, which goes in that hole. I always bend them. And then they slip out of the hole, then when I get them back in the hole, I bend them straight again. This is the simplest way. Now that it's bent straight again, 
every time you push the gas pedal this happens which moves this green lever up and down to squirt gas in and you see the little piston that was moving now to put all the screws in all the way around And boys and girls, they even stick two screws way down in the abyss that you have to find and put in two. Now all the bolts are in, and this is the little adapter that holds the crappy little fuel filter, and that's a spring that holds the fuel filter against this, whatever you call it. I've just scraped out all the rust in there. Always make sure when you put this back together, you've got your little nylon gasket on there, which you can barely see, because if you don't, gas runs all out here, slowly seeps, gets on your hot exhaust crossover tube, which is over there that actuates the riser on the choke, and then your car catches fire, and you don't even know it. You're just driving along, it's still running good, but the motor's on fire, so always make sure that gasket doesn't fall off. Of course, I'm not going to put the little paper filter back in because I'm using my Nissan Sentra filter. I'm too cheap to buy another one. They're like four dollars. Well, now I have to warn all you toddlers and gearheads. Reassembling one of these carburetors is not something you should do if you've consumed any alcohol. For sure you'll bend one of those pins or drop a clip or screw up a linkage or something will go wrong. It's okay to have one or two when you're taking it apart. But be dry when you're putting it together. You need to concentrate. Well, I got a battery in it. It's 18 degrees Celsius on April 17th. Now I'm going to see if it starts. I don't know if that battery survived the winter. It's the first time I tried that one. Fuel pump is doing the funky chicken while it's filling up the carburetor. It should stop. And she's taking her down. Chance. That guy looks like he does. Not a chance. Alright. Probably not. Okay. <laughs>